daughter, Princess Narodom Bupadevi, to be the first Apsara dancer. So after the discussion, the queen and the master artist agreed that they would have Angkor Wat and things from Angkor period as the inspiration and the sources of information for the creation of the dance. So with this picture, just, just a quick glance of this picture, and you can immediately say that the costumes of the dancers were created based on the Apsara Bali leaf at Angkor Wat. Ha. This is the picture of Princess Popatevi dancing as the principal Apsara, yeah. the one in the middle with, with the white blouse and, and the white, uh, not, not the white blouse, with the white skirt. Ha. The, the princess had accompanied her father, King Sihanu, in his in most of his diplomatic trips, dancing as a principal apsara for many world leaders, such, such as um, President Eisenhower, uh, General Charles de Gaulle, President Sukarno, Prime Minister Nehru, Prime Minister uh, Zhou Enlai, and many, many more. In this picture, the princess as the principal apsara has other three apsara here in red, I think, and blue. Yeah, red and blue um, skirts surrounding her. You might ask me that um, if this dance has a principal road and the subordinate road, so there must not just a dance, but, but they must have a story uh, in it. Of course, Queen Godsmart had chosen one of the myth of origin of the Khmer people as the storyline of the dance. Um, this story of the founder of Cambodia was inscribed actually in a stone inscription of the 10th century at the temple of Paksai Chamkrong. Um, the inscription attributed the origins of the Khmer people to the marriage of a hermit named Kampu Swayam Puwa and the most beautiful, the most glorious Apsara named Mera. So you can see that the name of the country, Kampu Cha, which means born from Kampu, was taken from the name of the hermit, while the word Khmer, which was used to call the people and their culture, came from the combination of the name of the ancestor Kam from Kampu and Mer from Mera. So if you say Kammer, 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 Kammer. So, so we got back to this myth from the inscription to make a storyline for the dance that Apsara Mera, she leads other heavenly ladies to a beautiful garden to pick flowers to be the gift for gods as she and other lady make a prayer for the happiness of her descendants so this is kind of like a, a, a chart dance and a, a chart storyline so not only the story that taken from the myth of Angkor period but other elements the queen also based them on the carving at Angkor Wat. So let's have a close look at the costumes, the decorations, the gestures and movement of the dancers and even the setting of the dance. This is the picture of Apsara carving at Angkor Wat. Please look at the headdress and their hairstyles. Uh, their dangling earrings and the collar of the necklace, the upper arm bracelet, the wrist bracelet, at least three or four of them, and, and the, 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 the decorated in Khmer they call Samwa, or the chest, the chest band, I would use that word, the, the chest band that were worn crosswise <coughs> over the chest, and the skirt, and also. Yes, they have an ankle jewelry at, at, at the ankle. In this picture, I put the stone apsara together with the apsara dancer. 
So you can see the similarity of the headdress and all the accessories, the the upper arm bracelets and things. Um, in this picture, you can see the apsaras having the flower in their hands, like um, in the carving. And because the stone apsara didn't wear any blouse, so the queen decided that the dancers were she they gonna wear the skin color tight fit blouse or I think now we can call it a body suit <laughs> like that okay. and just put the samwa on the top of the chest over over the over the chest and as for the skirt they wear the front pleated skirts made from in Khmer they call Jorabak I think in Thai it's a Yerabak uh, uh, a cloth it was only the main dancer who wears a front pleated skirt with a pleated fringe in the front of the skirt and also maybe you can't see it here on the left side so as in the as in the the, the stone apsara okay. and the queen um, intended that the principal apsara or Ning Mera wore the white skirt to reflect the purity of Khmer women. As for the dancers themselves, to become an Apsara dancer is very difficult. Not only for the practice, but for, I mean, she must have a specific characteristic and also a very specific appearance. She shouldn't be too tall or too short. 150 centimeters is perfect. But if taller than that, that's going to be too, too tall. And her skin must not be white and also must not be too dark. She must have a beautiful oval face with a beautiful oval eyes and a sharp nose and a large Ear lobes because you know the earring is very <laughs> heavy, like like the stone apsara, and particularly she must have a slim and slender shape, but not flat. You can't be flat. <laughs> she she must have a round body like the body of a red ant which means a very small waist because if you look at the, the, the stone apsara, they really have a body of a, a red ant like that, a very small waist and a nice uh, breath and, and, and hips like that. So it's very difficult to, to be <laughs> the apsara dancer. And most important then, that she must have a graceful characteristic gentle but at the same time must be confident and must not openly show her feeling because you will see in the video later that the apsaras dancers they always smile but they never show their teeth at all because it's mean like you know it's it's, it's not be a good cambodian girl to <laughs> smile broadly or laugh loudly like that. All the behavior is to follow the code of conduct for women, which is um, one of the most important didactic literature of Cambodia. It teaches Khmer women to be the perfectly virtuous women and was passed down from generation to generation for more than 500 years. Now let's let have a quick look at the movement of the dance. So this is the carving of the dancer in the hall of dancer at Baron Temple. As I said, you may remember this this bar relief. We can we can see clearer. I would use this drawing. You can see it clearer. And later you will see this position in the dance in the video. Okay, and also the hand. Gesture. I, I choose this picture because you can see they make a, a hand like this at her waist. 
Ha. In, in the West, they make a hand as a, in, in ma many gestures, and 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 you see the hand of the dancer. Ha. The hand gestures all have meaning in Khmer. Ha. This is the I can't see the the leaf and symbolize the bud and the fruit, and that one is the this one is the the stem of the flower, and this one is the blooming flower. That, this one. So all the gesture, I think more than hundreds of gesture, they all have meaning. Okay. So the last picture that I'm gonna show you today is the picture of the berry leaf at Bayon Temple. Please take a look at the trees. They are all different trees, and we can see their leaves very clearly. They have a bow trees and, and many trees. Now I will show you the, the video clips of Apsara dance and don't forget to look at the setting and the props on the stage. Um, this Apsara dance would probably in the, I think 1966 or 67 with uh, Princess Bupatevi as a Apsara Mira, the white Apsara. Thank you. 